suppose that we are given an initial speed for the launching of this object. We are given that the initial speed is 44 meters per second. So this is fixed, it doesn't change. But we are free to vary the launch angle. The question is, for what launch angle will we get the maximum range for this object? So let's take a launch angle of 61 degrees. So here the range is 167.4 meters. Let's decrease this angle. Let's decrease it to 53 degrees. So, so the launching speed, the initial speed U is still the same, 44. But we have a smaller launch angle. You can see we get a greater range. Let's bring the angle down to 45 degrees. Well, say 46 degrees. So here the range is 197.2. Let's make the angle even smaller. Say 42 degrees. So here we see the range is 196.3 meters. So it looks like the angle lies between 42 degrees and 46 degrees. If we make this angle even smaller, you will see that the range is, is, is less. It's 185.4. Well, it turns out that the angle that maximizes the range for any given initial speed is 45 degrees. So, so the maximum possible range for a launching speed of 44 meters per second is 197.3 meters. And to get that range, the launching angle must be 45 degrees. It doesn't, ma it doesn't matter what the initial speed is. Um, we could change this to whatever. 45 degree angle will give us the maximum range for any, for any initial speed. Now let's prove that. So we are given that the initial speed u is constant, but theta can vary. We saw in the last video that the equation of the trajectory is given by this here. So what we are interested in doing is to find the range. We want to find the x value of this point here. We know that the y value is 0. So we put this equal to 0 and we solve for x. So we can factorize x out of this. So this will enable us to find a range and then we can decide what value theta has to be to maximize this range. This distance here is the range. It's the x value of this point. So we solve this for x, we get a trivial solution, We've, this product gives us 0, so each factor must be, could be 0. x equals 0 gives us the trivial solution. When x is 0, y is 0, of course, when the object is launched. But when we put the other factor equal to 0, what do we get? Well, if we rearrange this to make x the subject, we get x equals tan theta divided by this thing here, 4.9 over u squared cos squared theta. Well that can be written as u squared cos squared theta times tan of theta divided by 4.9. Okay, we just multiply above and below by u squared cos squared theta to get this here. But then we realize that tan of theta is sine of theta over cos of theta. So we can replace this with sine theta over cos theta.
and we see that this cos theta cancels with one of the cos thetas in, in cos squared theta. So I'll continue writing up here. What we get is x equals u squared cos theta times sine theta divided by 4.9. So for different values of theta, we're going to get different values for x, and x, x means the range in this case. So I could just write r here. So the x value we're talking about is the range of this trajectory. So for different values of theta, we'll get different values of r. The question is, what value of theta maximizes r? Well, you might think we, we need to go into differentiation here. Um, we could get the derivative of r with respect to theta and set it equal to zero. This is how you find the value of theta that maximizes a function if you've done differentiation. So we could differentiate this with respect to theta, use a product rule here. However, we can make life a lot easier for ourselves by realizing that cos theta, sine theta can be replaced with something much simpler. We can use the following identity, which I will write over here. 2 sine theta cos theta equals sine 2 theta. So what we have up here is sine theta cos theta. So if we just divide across by 2, we can write this thing as u squared times a half sine 2 theta. And this is all divided by 4.9. Okay, so we just get sine theta cos theta divided across by 2. So we can replace this up here with a half sine 2 theta. Now you might say we still need to do differ differentiation. Well, you could do differentiation, but... Um, there's a much easier way to do it once you realize the limits of the sine function. The sine function lies between minus 1 and plus 1. It doesn't matter what this angle is. It happens to be 2 theta here, but that doesn't matter. So what's the maximum value of sine 2 theta? Well, the maximum value is plus 1. So what we can do is, to find the maximum value for the range, we can call it r max. We just put sine theta equal to 1. So we get u squared times a half times 1, or a half u squared, and underneath we have 4.9. So now we've found a maximum value for the, for the range. If we just multiply above and b below by 2, we see that the maximum value for the range is u squared over 9.8. So this is, we were interested in r max. So it's the initial speed squared, whatever that is, whatever u is, squared divided by 9.8. Okay, so what do we do? We put sine 2 theta equal to 1. That maximizes r. But if sine 2 theta equals 1, what is theta? Well, it means that 2 theta is inverse sine of 1. But the inverse sine of 1 is 90 degrees. Well, 90 degrees is the smallest value for the inverse sine of 1. Um, you know, this is a many-valued function, of course. We could add 360 onto 90 degrees and get another angle whose sine is 1, but we want the smallest one value. So if 2 theta is 90 degrees, what does that tell us about theta? It tells us that the launching angle that gives us r max, the maximum range, is 90 divided by 2, which is 45 degrees. 2 theta is 90, so launching angle for the maximum range is 45, half of 90 is 45 degrees. And it doesn't matter what the initial speed is, u. By the way, it doesn't matter what the mass is either. All along, you know, we have been ignoring the mass of this particle. That makes no difference, actually. 